Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to more Warhammer 40k lore. Well, today, we're going to talk about an orc. By the name of Grotznik, Warlor Gazgol Mag Uruk Thraka's favourite pain boy. You know, I haven't talked a whole lot about orc characters, have I? Orc characters in general, I really probably should start doing that, as there are a whole lot of fascinating folks inhabiting the 41st millennium, like Grotznik, or Mad Doc Grotznik, as he is more commonly and respectfully referred to these days. But Grotznik did not start out in such an elevated and respected position, oh god no. He was just a simple pain boy with absolutely no particular talent whatsoever, goddamn ever, honestly. Even if his record was to be compared favourably to the par for the core, a abysmally low success rate of your average pain boy, Grotznik would somehow find a way to scrape the bottom of the barrel clean. As in all due honest reality, he really only actually has one singular genuine success under his belt. There are orcs out there who aren't even pain boys who trump that statistic, by quite some margin, actually. But it is Grotznik's good fortune that his one success was a resounding one, as one day when Grotznik was sat polishing his instruments with grot piss if his reputation is anything to go by, at Rust Spike Outpost a mob of goth boys arrived. They had been part of a larger effort to attack a Space Marine surveillance outpost. Little more than a bundle of radar dishes and intelligence gathering apparatuses sat squatting atop a hill, with a handful of automated defences surrounding it. No actual Space Marines were manning it, of course, as the warriors of the God Emperor are far too valuable for such simple surveillance duty. But this did not discourage the Orcs. They knew there was a pile of beep boopy nonsense atop the hill, and they wanted it for themselves. Thus, in their attack, they triggered the automated defence systems, and as the tarantula was spitting out a torrent of bolt of fire, one of those bolts found a new home, nestled neatly in the skull of one of the goth boys where it swiftly exploded, turning the overwhelming majority of the orc's brain matter into a nice pulpy gooey mess that started running down the side of his face. Now, of course, 249 times out of 10, this would lead to the instantaneous death of the goth in question. But for some mysterious reason, this goth just refused to die. Which both impressed and amused the rest of his friends, who decided to take the goth along with them and get him some help. They guided the poor, unfortunate individual back down to Rustpike Outpost, where they knew that a pain boy resided who was willing to offer bribes in return for fresh carcasses. Now, theoretically, the goth in question wasn't a carcass, and that was very advantageous because he was able to walk on his own two feet all the way back to the pain boy, but he seemed pretty brain dead, so, you know, close enough for government work. The mob of goth boys then sold their friend for three teeth and a chopper. Now this was a relatively high price really, a chopper for a walking carcass, but the walking part was undoubtedly what caught Grotznik's expert eye. As being a trained medical professional, he could immediately ascertain that it is unusual for an orc to remain ambulatory after 75% of their brain matter has been explosively evacuated from their skull. Rather self-evidently, there was something interesting going around in this orc's little noggin, and so, just to be safe, Grotznik tied him down to the table with extra large leather straps, and had his Grot assistants ready his instruments, and began poking around in the open and seeping brain of his brand new patient. Many legends has since been told as to what exactly went on in that operational theatre. Some assert that one of the Grot orderlies vomited inside of the open skull, others assert that the Grot merely relieved himself into the convenient cavity in front of him. 
All we know for absolute certain is that Grotznik started the evening's operation with a full set of Pain Boy tools, and ended it with several having mysteriously gone missing. Never to be located ever again. Yeah, well. Having eventually figured that he'd done all he could, Grotznik then closed his patient up via the application of a large adamantium plate, fixed solidly and robustly in place by a series of nine-inch nails combined with a mallet that Grotznik had found outside. Studying the several samples that Grotznik had delicately retrieved from the patient's head with a spatula, he reluctantly had to come to the conclusion that he had probably been ripped off. A little bit of roughly scrambled brain matter wasn't really all that difficult to come by in your average orc encampment, and three teeth and a chopper for this? <sighs> but then, a miracle upon a miracle happened. The patient, much to Grotznik's surprise, I have no doubt, woke back up again. <laughs> well, that's unusual, and not at all supposed to happen. I imagine Grotznik was right in the middle of reaching for a particularly heavy piece of surgical instrument when the goth started speaking. And what absolute utter gobbledygook nonsense that poured out of his communication hole. The little bastard claimed to have spoken with Gork and Mork. Clearly, the rough handling of his cerebral cortex must have kicked in some serious fungal delusions, and yet Grotznik was fascinated, as the orc seemed to genuinely believe the garbage that was vomiting forth from him. To hear him tell it, he had been picked particular to lead the Greenskins to magnificent victories, to unite a tremendous warg, and venture forth into the galaxy. Again, absolute, utter, unvarnished hogwash. As the particular planet in question, Uruk, had been divided up amongst dozens and dozens of competing warlords for as long as anyone could remember. And the idea that any one of them would suddenly rise to prominence, much less some rando orc boy who had recently had his skull ventilated, <laughs> well, that was about as likely as a squig showing mercy. But then again, Grotznik had theoretically technically received his payment for his services, and it would be mildly churlish to keep the orc you know, tied up in his operating table forever. Plus, Grotznik required the space, so he released the orc and waved him fondly farewell as the young goth boy stumbled out of Grotznik's workshop. To be seen again fairly soon as aforementioned Goth just so happened to be named Gazgul Maguruk Thraka. He would return to Grotznik's humble abode shortly thereafter, after having beaten to death the warlord of Rust Spike Outpost, finishing him off incidentally by headbutting him with his new adamantium skull. Apparently, Gazgul wanted to recruit Grotznik to be his personal pain boy, and seeing as the orc was currently covered in the smushed up blood and skull fragments of the previous warlord of the outpost, Grotznik saw no particular reason to object to his request. This was when Grotznik's fortunes took quite the turn for the better. Suddenly, Grotznik was extraordinarily popular. Whatever he had done to Garsgul must have been a bang-up job, as he went from regular, retarded, orcish foot soldier to war boss in the span of, oh, about an afternoon, roundabouts. And so the Gars Ghoul Special, as it became known, became all the rage amongst all the knobs in Gars Ghoul's rapidly growing warband. The only problem was, <laughs> Grotznik didn't have the faintest fucking clue what he'd done. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Why should he have? Gars Ghoul was all but dead. <laughs> all Grotznik was really doing <laughs> was retrieving samples. <laughs> And now, hundreds of high-ranking knobs were clamoring at his door to get their own pieces of metal hammered into their skulls. What was a pain boy to do? Well, take advantage of the situation, of course. Duh. 
And so whilst Grotznik opened for business, advertising the Gaz Ghoul special, he had his Grot orderlies run out to the mech boys and fetch him a variety of small, relatively non-intrusive explosive devices, each one with its own dedicated detonator. And he then started giving the knobs exactly what they wanted, the Gaz Ghoul special, with a neat little surprise added alongside. Soon thereafter, any orc knobs that failed to give Grotznik the adequate quantity of respect and deference, and first pick at the battlefield carcasses, of course, universally came down with a nasty case of splitting headaches and usually split skulls and heads and everything else as well in a beautiful shower of gore. Initially, I'm sure that Grotznik would have played up the mysterious aspect of all of this, probably using his connection to Gars Ghoul, the prophet of Gork and Mork. Oh, you shouldn't say mean things about me or weird stuff will happen, but much to his own inconvenience, Grotznik was not the most subtle of orcs, and he got very trigger happy with those custom little detonators, and soon a pattern that even an orc could easily discern emerged. Nobs went into Grotznik's operating table, received a Gaz Ghoul special, and then shortly thereafter, immediately upon saying something mean about Grotznik, their heads would explode whereas other knobs, and goths and soldiers in general, could badmouth Grotznik all the live-long day with seemingly no consequences. Hmm. <laughs> Even orcs aren't quite that retarded, and especially when it comes to suspecting the worst of one of their fellow greenskins. Getting together then, the knobs formed a little alliance of those victimized by Grotznik, and they called him out for an emergency medical consultation. One of the warband's deaf dreads, you see, had run into a sudden and unfortunate and catastrophic accident, and it simply had to be fixed tonight. Oh, don't worry about it, Grotznik, you don't need to bring along anything in particular, just bring yourself and your sunny disposition. Feeling no real danger at the situation, seeing as he had his finger on their triggers, so to say, Grotznik came along, and once he saw his patient, the Death Dread wasn't quite as uh, broken as he had been led to believe, as it quickly pinned Grotznik down to the ground and powered up its buzzsaw, inching it very, very, very slowly towards Grotznik's head whining all the time as Grotzny could hear the guffawing laughter of all of the knobs standing around him, enjoying the spectacle. No doubt reveling in the irony of seeing the good Dr. Grotznik with his head sawed open by an enormous cutting blade. They left him there, bleeding and dying, slowly, painfully, in no small part due to the irony, I'm sure. But Grotznik also was the recipient of a little miracle, not quite as remarkable as the one that had saved Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka, but one almost as unusual within Greenskin society. His miracle was not the gift of the gods, but rather loyal Gretchen. I don't know which one is more absurd, truly. Really. <laughs> but, apparently, Grotznik's Gretchen orderlies had followed him, noticed his torture, and in between their own giggling, I'm sure, decided to try and rescue their master. I don't know what to say, honestly. <laughs> this is not normal Gretchen behavior by any stretch of the imagination. More often than not, they would have simply joined in the fun, guffawing loudly, or at the very least waited until Grotznik was mostly dead before sneaking over and stealing all of his stuff. But instead, the little bastards not only managed to agree to save him, but then haul his 
massively more heavy form back into his laboratory, strap him down to his own operating table, and then set about working on him. Now, to be fair, one interpretation of events here might be that it wasn't charity that moved their tiny little green fingers, but rather the opportunity to try for themselves all of the funny things that they'd seen Grotznik do to others, as they did spend an awful lot of time poking about his body with, well, anything that came to mind. Uh, Grotznik's orderlies were, like most Gretchens, not exactly, you know, trained in any way. They were there to fetch screwdrivers and hammers and clamps and whatever else Grotznik decided to hit his patients with. Their medical expertise was low even by Grotznik's abysmal standards. And a fair bit of his laboratory no doubt ended up inside of his skull, along with apparently more than one piece of local fauna, but details, details. Now, despite the Gretchen Orderly's uh, attentive ministrations, Grotznik died several times that night whilst still strapped to the table. But through frantic efforts and the applications of truly tremendous quantities of electricity, I can only assume, they somehow managed to keep bringing him back to life. Whether, again, through altruistic intentions or simply because they found it amusing to see him squirm at that point, Somewhat unclear. Choose whichever one makes you feel fluffier, I suppose. But when morning came, Grotznik was alive. Severely brain damaged and with a brand new fascination for weird visions, but alive. And as the meme goes, Gork and Mork has chosen to let me live another day, and I'm about to make it everyone's problem. As that is exactly what Grotznik did. He emerged from his cave with his brand new enormous scar and the top half of his head crudely bolted on, and began dancing through the settlement, singing shouting and giggling with glee as he pressed all the little explodey button in his vast collection of remote detonators. Accompanied thus by the sound of heads going pop, 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 pop. You might have thought that <laughs> Carl School would have had a word with his doc after this, considering he had just decapitated the overwhelming majority of his leadership. But... Gazgul had taken a real shine to the doctor who granted him the gift of visions, and so he simply instructed him to stop putting bombs in people's heads, or if he absolutely must, then he should be a bit more sparing in their detonations. And Grotznik, in all due likelihood, beginning to realize that he might have pushed his own luck somewhat, agreed. As thereafter, whilst he's still a bully boy extraordinaire, he has not proved uh, an overt threat to the Gazgulian Wag's leadership structure, I suppose. Though the Gazgul special is still a very popular surgical procedure that has spread widely to other pain boys as well. The problem is, however, that Whilst in the past there was obviously some dangers with the procedures, including the exploding head syndrome, it was still a relatively straightforward procedure. But after his injury, Grotznik has taken up a brand new and fascinating hobby. He has decided to try and figure out how exactly the orc brain works. And his only conclusion so far is that it doesn't. In fact, you can do damn near anything you want to it, and it seems to keep ticking and or simply stop. To the point that now, he has begun exploring the possibility of brain transplants. Squig to orc brain transplants, specifically. Why? That's a very good question, and he's had extraordinarily limited success so far. But with Gazgul's war grinding ever onwards, he is not going to be running out of test subjects any time soon. 
and he's very unlikely to be exposed to any further assassination attempts as well, as Gazgol has made it very clear that he favours Grotznik above all other pain boys, because, weirdly, whenever Grotznik is actually called to attend to Gazgol, he suddenly gets very serious and good at his job. He's actually saved Gazgol's life on multiple occasions, which is a remarkable achievement for somebody who uh, basically hasn't saved anybody else's life, and considering the fact that his orderlies managed to save his, I do believe that the occasional outlier where his patients actually do live through the procedure probably has more to do with the Gretchens than Grotznik. Oh well. Details, details, I do suppose. As Grotznik will have plenty of opportunity to uh, keep himself at the bleeding edge of orc medical science, even on occasion um, experimenting a little bit on himself. Maybe that's where the squig thing came from. Maybe the Gretchens didn't actually keep Grotznik alive at all, and simply just kind of ensconced a squig into his head. And now it's bouncing around wildly, pressing various synaptic triggers leading to his erratic behavior. It would certainly explain his suddenly increased capability for medical administration whenever Gazgul calls. And speaking of only mild incompetence, I did manage to release last week's video a week early. So again, Guild of Destiny, which is a very interesting looking game, is currently in the Kickstarter right now. I will leave links in the description down below and in the comment section as well if you want to check it out. It does genuinely look quite interesting to me, so do consider giving a look. And I will see you all again, I hope, next week with more 40k or possibly Warhammer lore. Have a good day.